So time to add Firebase Authentication. Now we do already have an authentication module in the course, but again, there I showed you the more generic way of authenticating. Yes, we did use Firebase there, but only as a dummy backend. We used the Firebase REST API to send a regular HTTP request to Firebase. And then for example, we had to manage that token that identified the user on our own. We manually had to attach it to outgoing HTTP requests. We had to manage its lifetime. We had to validate the token. All of that had to be done by us. Now I did use that approach because I find it super important that you know this generic way of doing it because you might not always be using Firebase. You might be working with any REST API that exposes such a sign up or login endpoint. And therefore that was crucial information. However, if you are using Firebase, you can have an easier life by simply using the Firebase Authentication SDK, an extra package that helps us with creating users, with signing users up, and most importantly, with managing that token. You can search for Flutter Firebase Auth to find that Firebase Auth package and you can simply go to the installation instructions here, grab that dependency and go back to our popspec.yaml file and add it there below Cloud Firestore. And now this will download and add this Firebase auth package to the Flutter project. And this package will make our lives much easier. Now for that to work, we first of all need to go back to our Flutter project here in the web console and go to authentication there. And here under authentication, click on setup sign in method because we need to configure this Firebase project to support authentication before we can use authentication in our app. So click on setup sign in method and you got plenty of sign in methods to choose from. The official Firebase docs help you with them. I will go for the traditional email password sign up. So click enable here. Leave the defaults then as they are and click on save. And with that enabled, we can go back to our application. And here in submit auth form, I now want to use the Firebase auth package, which we just added to either create a new user or to log a user in. So for that, we can check if is login is true, in which case you want to log a user in, or if it's false, in which case you want to create a new user. Now, for that, we first of all need to import this package, the Firebase auth package, and from that, Firebase auth.dart. And then here, in the entire screen state class, we can create a new final variable, which I'll name auth, which is Firebase auth.instance like this. This will give us an instance to the Firebase auth object, which is automatically set up and managed by the Firebase auth package. We don't need to do anything for that. It's all managed behind the scenes because of that Firebase configuration and linking we did earlier in this module. So now we get this auth object here. We can now use this here in the is login case, for example, to call sign in with email and password. And this one's two arguments, surprisingly the email and password. So we can forward these two values, these two variables, email and password, which we're receiving here. Now this will log a user in, or it will try to do so. Now sign in with email and password actually returns uh, a future. Here, you can tell that it returns a future which will then unwrap itself to an auth result in the end. Now for that, I will add a new variable here, which will be of type auth result, and I'll name it auth result, which will simply hold that future here. And now the important thing is, as I just said, this gives us a future, not directly the auth result. So to get the auth result, I will turn this into an async function by adding async here between the argument list and the function body. And then we can await here. And as you all learned in the course, this will basically uh, wait for this future to complete and then store the result in the auth result variable. And we can do something similar here 
in the else case, which is the sign up case. There we call auth and now it's create user with email and password and we still pass the email and password as arguments to this function. So that's pretty straightforward, not too difficult. We have these two options, we send these requests and again behind the scenes Firebase will go ahead, send the request and automatically store the token if the request succeeds and manage the token lifetime for us. That's all taken care of. Now for the username, we're not doing anything with that yet. We'll soon do so. And we're also not doing something with the auth result here. We'll do so soon too. One thing I wanna do immediately is I wanna add error handling. This here can fail. And when you're using async await, you can use try catch to try something and potentially catch errors. So here I'll wrap all of that in a try block and then down there, catch any error. However, not any error. I wanna catch a specific type of error and we can do this with the on keyword. I wanna catch any error of type platform exception. That should essentially be errors that are thrown by Firebase because we, for example, entered an invalid email or an invalid password or anything like that. In that case, I'll set up a message. An error occurred. Please check your credentials. That's the general error message. But we'll also look into the error object we're getting and see if we have a more specific message there. So we can check if error message is unlike null. So if it's not equal to null, so if we have an error message, in which case I'll overwrite message and set it equal to error.message. And then if we do have such a message, it would be nice to show, for example, a little message to the user. And for this, we can use scaffold of context to show a snack bar. Now the snack bar is this little message thing that comes up from the bottom of the screen and shows an error to the user. And here we create a snack bar by instantiating the snack bar widget, which ships with Flutter. And to snack bar, we can pass the content argument and set up a text widget, which shows the message we want to show. So this value, which is stored in the message variable. And you can also set the background color of this snack bar and here I'll use theme of context dot error color. And this should be a nice red color for this snack bar. Now, after this, so after this on platform exception catch block, I'll add another catch block, which catches any other errors we might have. There shouldn't be many, but in case there are errors, I'll print them here so that we during development can see them at least. Okay, that was a lot of work. We're not done, but let's see whether this works thus far. If I save this and I try to sign up and I enter test at test.com and I enter a valid password and I enter some username, the username is not getting stored anyways right now, so it doesn't matter. But if I enter some username and I click sign up, I see no error at least. I do see an error here regarding the missing plugin exception and a simple app restart should fix this. So let's close this running process and again restart. In general, if you get such a missing plugin error, simply restart the app entirely and try again. So let's wait for that to come up again. And if we now go back and try to create a new account again, enter all those credentials and click sign up. Again, no error here, but an error here. So let's see what's wrong. And we see that we have a problem with the scaffold auth function. No scaffold ancestor could be found. That's essentially the problem we, we have here. Now, before we tackle this, let's switch to Firebase and go to users there under authentication and you shouldn't see a user there because something went wrong. That's the reason why we tried to show that snack bar, but there also something went wrong. So we got a couple of errors. The problem here is that on this scaffold, I'm using a context here to basically tell Flutter in which context to render the scaffold. 
The problem is here I'm using the context of this off screen. And this is actually the wrong context here. Instead, we should accept the build context here as an extra argument in submit auth form and use this context instead. So here use this CTX argument also for the theme. Now you might be wondering, where is this build context coming from? Currently from nowhere, we have to pass it. So we have to go to the auth form and for one, make it clear here on this submit function property that we need to pass the context here because we want it in that other screen and therefore we need to pass it here. So when we call submit function as a last argument, I'll forward my context because this here from the auth form is the context that actually has access to the surrounding scaffold, which in turn is the context where the snack bar should be mounted on. Because off screen context does not have access to this scaffold because this scaffold here is rendered by the off screen. Now the context of the off screen is one level above that. So in order to have access to this scaffold on which the snack bar should be rendered, we have to dive into a widget which is inside that scaffold and the context of that widget is then the right one and that's just the case for auth form. So with that we should now at least see an error message if I click sign up and I do. The email address is badly formatted. Now it looks like a valid email address to me but it is this extra white space at the end here which is causing problems. Now this is a bad user experience that we uh, are not able to authenticate because of this. So therefore I'll go back to the auth form widget and when I forward user email and so on, I will actually call trim on those values to remove any access white space at the beginning and end. So this will remove any access white space on email, password and username and therefore will not get this error because we'll not send this white space as part of the email. So if we now click sign up, this closes and now we get no error and now if we go back to the web console and you refresh this users list, you should see your user here with your email address. And this was now created by this Firebase auth SDK. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. We also saw the error handling in action, so that's great too. And with that, we can create users. That's a nice first step. They are now stored and this token, which is sent back by Firebase is already managed by the Firebase package. We don't need to do anything there. It will even be automatically added to outgoing requests, which we're later going to send. So that's entirely happening behind the scenes, which is super, super awesome and takes a lot of work away from us. However, the authentication process is not fully finished. We will later also add image upload, but that will follow, well, later. But one thing I want to do immediately is store the username. And that's currently not happening. We're getting the username, but we're not doing anything with it. So let's make sure we also store the username. 